All right, guys, so congratulations. I really enjoyed the series, binge watched it over the holidays. And it's funny because obviously we know who F. Scott Fitzgerald is, but what I didn't realize was the actual breakdown of the life that he shared with Zelda Fitzgerald. So my first question is an easy one to you, Christina. Why Zelda? What was it about Zelda Fitzgerald's story that made you want to tell it through an Amazon series? Um, I think it's a story that has not necessarily been told. Um, there's been lots of stuff about uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald, but there's never been anything that was about Zelda, for, and certainly nothing from her point of view, because she's dead. Um, <laughs> That's a good reason. <laughs> but, uh, you know, creative license, we can do it. We can do a voice beyond the grave type of thing. Um, and I, you know, and I think, you know, it's a bit of rehabilitating her reputation, because she's, I think, been sort of unfairly maligned. So you're playing an iconic couple, and that's daunting all in itself. When you have to become F. Scott Fitzgerald, David, talk to me about the process of making him your own, bringing this icon that people may or may not be familiar with to the small screen, but in your own way. And also for you, Christina, a woman that people weren't necessarily familiar with, how do you bring Zelda to life and show both the good and bad with their dynamic? Well, I think... Um I don't know, I'm, I'm speaking from my own experience here, but I, I didn't really know that much about F. Scott to begin with. Uh, I think most things that have portrayed him has been more so his books, his novels. Uh, you've seen films about The Great Gatsby and The Last Tycoons coming out. and um, There's been a lot of things about his fictional characters. Um, so we're more delving into the story behind the stories. Um, who F. Scott and Zelda were as as people, um, so that that's sort of at the heart of it all. I feel that it's a story of how they met and whatever happened to them. Their relationship was very passionate, very very tumultuous. Um, I don't know if a lot of people are aware of their history in that way. Is that why you wanted to tell her story? You wanted people to actually know the woman behind the woman. Yeah, I mean, I think anytime there's two people who are so famous and everyone knows everything about one person and nothing about the other, except for what Hemingway said about them, <laughs> then uh, it's worth telling the other person's story. What do you hope people take away from this show? Obviously, we know that we're watching the story of the Fitzgerald, but what's the underlying message that you hope gets taken away? Well, it's interesting because I think that the time, that time period that we're showing very much mimics things that are going on right now in terms of... Um, you know, it was a time when everything modern was put up on a pedestal. Um, people were forward thinking. Nobody wanted to think about the past. The past was World War I. And, you know, we were moving forward, techno technology, everything was exciting. And youth culture was, you know, youth culture being like, you know, 19-year-old people, that, mm. that youth culture um, was elevated in a similar way that it's elevated right now. Um, so it's interesting to see two people who have who kind of embody that same exuberance. So Christine, obviously you're a producer on this show. What was it like? Because we're seeing with streaming networks right now the incredible content. Amazon is at the forefront of it. When you come to Amazon and you say, I want to make a show about Zelda Fitzgerald, what is it like working with them? Walk me through the whole creative process. It's great. It's really <laughs> exciting. Amazon. Their whole thing is you can do anything as long as it has an artistic integrity and you can't find it on any other network or outlet. Um, so that's like thrilling as an artist. So how did you discover Zelda's story? When does this woman's story come to your attention and when do you decide, hey, I'm going to make a TV show about this and play her? I was just, it was on a bestseller list, uh, the book. And um, so I just downloaded it and started reading it. What were F. Scott Fitzgerald and Zelda Fitzgerald really like? We, we don't really know. We're never going to know exactly what F. Scott was like. You can't really refer to a lot of video footage. Um, there's certain things that are, a lot of stuff that's written about him. Um, but I guess that's the challenge is to try and formulate your own opinion on what he was like. More so for me on a personal level. Than a professional level. I, mean, I think a lot of people know what he was like professionally. He was well respected. You can read his books. Um, uh, you know, he's very eloquent in his writing. Um, but for me, it was 
trying to more get into a, a personal um, account of his dark side and his light side. You know, there was they were, they're both very complex characters, which is obviously that's what you want when when you're working. Um, so it was the, the challenge was initially, at least for me, was to try and make sure that they had a strong relationship to begin with. Because as you said, it starts off with the romantic part of it, which is really, if, if we can pull that off, then people are going to care what happens. Christina, I'd mentioned earlier that you are a producer on this show. And what's incredible right now is we're seeing such an explosion of not only female directors coming to be, but also female producers who are forming their own production companies and bringing female-centric, terrific content, both to the big screen and the small screen. Talk to me about being part of that movement. What does it mean to you, not only to tell this woman's story, but also to be able to get behind the whole process and bring it to life and be part of the movement that actresses like Reese Witherspoon are really pushing forward right now? That's wonderful. I mean, there's nothing more gratifying than having an idea, wanting to do something, and seeing it fully realized. It's amazing. It's fascinating because obviously when you think about F. Scott Fitzgerald, you know Gatsby, you know here was this rock star author who has become a cultural icon in American history, but they weren't necessarily the big rock stars at that point that they are today. Talk to me about people seeing that. What are they going to get and take away when they see the lives of F. Scott Fitzgerald and Zelda Fitzgerald? I feel like they very much knew how famous they were they and how important he was as a novelist. I mean, that shapes the rest of their relationship, actually, because they were one of the first couples in America that was elevated to like celebrity status um, because of the class system falling apart after changing after World War I. Um, because of, you know, all of a sudden there were all these, a lot more newspapers and a way of the entire nation being, so they were one of the first kind of like equivalent of like rock stars at the mm. time. And that initial fame that I think was, became, well, from what everything we've read and, and kind of discussed and imagined became really a drug that they chased for the rest of their lives. Um, so I think it is actually important to, 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 to realize this is something they wanted. They wanted to be the most famous people in the world. Mm -hmm. They got to be the most famous people in the world at the time in their minds and, you know, for at the time, yeah, they were really famous. And then, um, and then that shaped them constantly chasing that from then on. And, you know, pardon me for speaking about your character, but I think that that's a big thing about Scott was that he was always chasing that first rush. Yeah, I mean, he was chasing it to be, he always wanted to be, well, for, at least in our opinion, he always wanted to be famous. He always wanted to be, he wanted to leave a legacy as the best American novelist in history. I think maybe where the confusion lies is he wasn't recognized for Gatsby until after his death. Oh, the Gatsby So thing. that's, oh, yeah, that's yeah. where everyone, that's what everyone knows him as now and during the time. Uh, you know, I don't think it was well as well received, but they certainly had. That first book was huge. Yeah, it was huge. Yeah. It was huge, and, and I think that's that's what it was. They they certainly got to the pinnacle, they got to the top, but then it's that old story of wanting to stay at the top. Mm -hmm. That's where the the problems arise. 